Right now, getting jiggy with the laughing bureau.com. Get jiggy with it. Uh, little rail, you've been busy, man. What's going on with you lately? What you been up to? And I've been getting it in, man, you know, out here filming stuff and uh, meeting a lot of great networks and just doing some things to take my career to another level, that's all. Right, right. You know, I happened to catch you on Arsenio last night, and you kind of went in and talked about how that was like a, a dream for you to be there. I mean, kind of just talk to us, to us about that process of being on Arsenio, you know, to to maybe when you were coming up wanting to be on that show. Well, I mean, the crazy thing is, like, uh, yesterday, my number one doing the show felt surreal, you know what I'm saying? Like, like being backstage, um, you know, they gave me a robe or whatever, um, looking at the set. I really didn't know what I kind of wanted to do. I mean, the well, funny thing is I'm doing, like, the Bluetooth and some of the similar stuff on different TV shows because, you know, most of the shows have different audiences and stuff you're being introduced. So what you want to do first is put out your your hottest, your h- hardest stuff first. You know what I mean? I don't want to do all extra new stuff on everything just because, uh, like I said, there's different people watching it. And I look at it as a season. So this season, this is the material I'm doing. And I've always started working on my new stuff for my next hour. But but to do our studio was crazy, man. I mean, big up to Claudia who... Uh, who saw me at Chris Pistol's spot inside Joe's Chris and Andrew's spot, and Chris invited her out to the show. And after the show, Chris, you know, was like, "Yeah, it's Claudia. She books uh, our city. I'm like, for real." And she was so nice, and her daughters was really nice. She was just telling me how funny I was, and how she really wants to get me on the show, and all those great things. Um, and then uh, Ali Leroy, he's a consultant producer over there. You know, he brought me in to do some uh, field pieces too. And also to our city about me also. So besides the set you saw me do last night, you're probably going to see me like in another week or so with the uh, field piece we shot too. So um, just man, just rocking stages and, and being chill, and people look out for you when you when you you know when you ain't extra like that. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Kind of going back to what you talked about, you kind of decided to go with certain material for this season. Like, is that stuff kind of hurting you? Does that mess up the fans like a little bit? Do they? Respond like, oh, we've seen that material already. You know, what else you got? How does that? How do you handle that? Well, the funny thing is, I kind of do everything differently, and this, and this is the difference between just having jokes and having characters people love. I get more flack from people when I do shows if I don't do a joke they saw already. You know, and I used to be like, what? You know, because I've seen them get mad at people for doing things, but I had to realize, you know. My material ain't like everybody. Some people are just telling jokes. When you're telling these stories, it's just like if you have some, like an uncle who tells the stories. Every year you ask him to tell a story about Aunt, Aunt Joyce uh, falling down or something, you know what I mean, or whatever. So it's, it's and, and, and Aunt Joyce, I wasn't talking about you falling down. But it's just, it was just an example. But it's, it's like, you know, you have somebody that just tells a good story, you know what I mean? So you have somebody that tells a good story and the characters are strong. People won't feel like that. And, and the crazy thing is everybody, unless they're a diehard fan of you, and you're like a Kevin Hart level, they're not going to watch every single thing you do. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's what's up. So what's going on with you and um, in your hometown where I just was able to come across that you launched in this new sports comedy radio show? I mean, where does that come from? Is this something that you always been into sports? Uh, you know, how did, how did it come about? Well, um, number one, I am a huge sports fan, um, and my brother is too, and uh, my man Trader Chocolate Jock, who uh, was one of the uh, big radio VJs out there in Chicago, uh, he's running a, uh, or he's managing over at Urban um, um, Broadcast Media in Chicago, which is a, uh, it's just places amazing, man, they got like film stuff and radio stuff, and just something they put in the community to, to, you know, open some opportunities up to some young people and just to people who want to do something like this in general. So anyway, they contacted me, and I didn't really want to do anything at first, to be honest with you, because my schedule had been crazy. But my little brother hit me up one day. was like, man, yo, I want to on my own, I want to try to do a sports show, a sports radio show. I think I want to go to school for or whatever, whatever. 
And I'm like, yo, that sounds like a good idea. You know, because me and this dude be on the phone talking for hours about stuff, like random sports stuff. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, well, you want to do you want to do a sports show? He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And um, and that's when I made the decision to do a sports show. It's just more or less to give him to get his feet wet in this and to get hands on experience with it and and also, you know, you know, he can go to school and get his official uh, you know, broadcasting uh, license or whatever. But um uh, yeah, I did this really because of my little brother. I mean that's kinda where I met with a lot of stuff, man. Um and this might sound corny I guess, but if I can help somebody get to where they're going, then I'm gonna do that. You know, I know I'm not a big plug person or nothing yet. But whatever I can do, I'm going to do it. And that's honestly what I've been doing. So, um, you know, I think that's why I'm so blessed and with a lot of opportunities because each opportunity I'm getting for myself, I'm figuring out a way to bring in people, um, to bring in people to get those same type of opportunities and to help them as they do. And as far as, like, bringing in people, because, I mean, I see that done a lot with people on and they, and they try to get that team. You know, you're a comedian. Do you see yourself, like, bringing in other comedians as a unit? Like, like you see Rick Ross, what he does with Maybach. And you kind of, you like, you, what is being known is you're going to be, like, a, a comedian in position that could bring in other guys. Do you see yourself going to that type of model where you kind of like the capo of it? And then, like, you bring yeah. some guys you fuck with. Yeah, I, I've already kind of started that in a way because I want to do, Rick Ross is a good hip-hop reference or, you know, and there's a couple of them who do the same, but I look at somebody like Adam Sandler, right? Okay. And what he does with his production company and who he's brought in and who he gets cast in his movies with him. And, you know, that's the type of position I'm working myself to be in someday. And I won't wait until I'm just this huge star and then I start bringing my friends in. That's not what I will do. You know, as I go, then I will bring in the right not just friends, but the right people uh, who fit to that, what I'm trying to do. You know, and if you're talented enough, and besides just being talented, you know, you're good people, and you got a good spirit about you, man, that's who I want around me, and that's who I'm going to look out for. And always, you know, you never know who's going to be what. You know, and uh, if you do this stuff genuinely first, I always believe it opens up a whole, a whole slew of doors for you because you're doing it to you got good intentions, you know. I even look at, you know, the stuff with ADB, uh, especially the stuff we shot in Chicago. You know, I wanted to shoot in Chicago to bring in, to give Chicago comedians a look, you know, and to give a Chicago director a look. So, you know, Calvin Evans is in my sketch. In the sketch, ain't he edited the sketch? You know, the, the, uh, the talents of the comics in Chicago, you know, and, or just the talent in general. So, you know, just bringing James Reed and uh, bringing Marina, who helped me write everything, and she did that, the makeup and uh, hair with, uh, you know, Frank Neen and uh, Misha, who does all the nails in Chicago, like, like the dope stuff. She, she did, like, it's, I, you know, you're bringing in all these people who are talented, and, you're, you know, all of us are helping each other, you know what I mean? And, and my, even my friend Tony Rush, the, the beginning song in, in the prom sketch. You know, that's his local artist. Okay. So I, I, try, I try to implement as much as I can and do as much as I can. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't have any pressure on picking people who they're making me pick. I pick who I want to. Okay. You know, so, and like I said, if you're good people, you got a good spirit and, uh, you know, good vibes, then I'm going to look out for you. And that's just what it is.